What's up, everybody? Uh, this is the recap video for the Monday, November 27th slate. Uh, interesting slate, kind of boring. Um, not a lot of good out there. I put up 274.3. I am down on the night, a, you know, 25% or so. I'm not too upset with my lineup. Um, just a couple points off of the triple up score or the triple up cut line, which really would have changed my night. Um, and there aren't a lot of places where I would have really made any changes. We'll get to that. Uh, ultimately, I'm fine with it, but it's not. I don't. I don't take tonight as like a big miss or anything. It's just. It is what it is. I was above the cut line in a double up. That's usually my. Um, my bar that I'm trying to cross. In this case, I was, you know, 201 in this double up of 500 and however many people. So, you know, 50 spots clear of that, which makes me happy. But let's dig into it. Um, we'll go over my lineup quick. I had, at point guard, I had Dame Lillard and Sean Livingston. Uh, Dame was 46% owned in this particular double up. Um, Sean Livingston was 86%. Had the news that Sean Livingston was not going to be the starter, if that would have came out um, before the game, I probably wouldn't have taken him. Um, projected him for 27 minutes with the assumption that he was going to be the starter. He played 17 minutes. Um, I believe Pat McCall got the start. Uh, yeah, like, uh, but 86% of the people took him, and he was $3,000. Still got to 15.7. You know, he was able to hit quote unquote 5x value. You want more out of a $3,000 guy, but it is what it is. When he was not starting, I stopped paying attention to it. I mean, I didn't really pay attention to anything in the Warriors game. I was long asleep before that tipped off. Dame, um, I thought he was in a really good spot. Uh, the Knicks aren't very good, and they don't have very good point guard defense. I thought that fit Dame really well. Um, I projected him for 40 points in 35 minutes. He put up 40 points in 37 minutes, just shy of value, 50% uh, owned. You know, it's a similar thought process as everyone else. Next, we have shooting guard. I had uh, Harden and Clay Thompson. I'll start with Clay. Um, he put up 35 fantasy points in 32 minutes. He had 5x on the dot. 71% uh, owned. Uh, it was just sort of a no-brainer. The lineup sort of built itself last night, as you could tell by how much major chalk I have over there. I only have two differentiators that are anywhere off of the 50-50 guys. Only 20, one in 2,800 lineup, which kind of bums me out. I wish I would have differentiated a little bit more, but not in the ways that I ultimately did. I'm going to sip here. Shit, it's still too hot. Um... So let's talk about Harden before I take a look at all the positions. If you watched the live video last night, you'll know that I was flip-flopping between a lineup with Harden or a lineup with Braun. And ultimately I decided that I liked the lineup that I have now that fit the best with James Harden in it. And then um, the Braun's ownership came out at 50 something percent in my double up and LeBron scored 20 fantasy points in the first six minutes of the game and I thought that I was cooked right out of the gate and I just had to wait to see sort of what Harden's ownership was and you know whether or not he was going to perform so Harden's ownership that game the, the Rockets game locks and Harden's ownership in that particular double up that I'm in was 16.7%. And I tweeted out at the time that I made a, you know, I made a mistake that I should have rostered LeBron and that I greatly overestimated James Harden's ownership percentage. And this sort of bailed me out because he put up 69 fantasy points in 35 minutes. He shot the absolute lights out in the first quarter and had a bigger first half than LeBron did. 
and that looks great. It makes me look it makes me look smarter to have taken James Harden and fading LeBron in a roundabout way. But in all actuality, it's all born off of a mistake and you'll never see anybody else or you'll rarely see anybody else talk through something like this and admit something like this but I would not have taken James Harden had I known his ownership percentage was going to be 17% and LeBron's was going to be 50 I would have taken LeBron James because I missed so bad on thinking that Harden's ownership would be I figured somewhat like 30 you know middle ground type of stuff there weren't like it was him and Braun yesterday stud wise unless you want to count Embiid um, I just thought I just assumed it would be higher especially once all the Brooklyn news and Golden State news came out and like the value opened up that it wasn't weird to have them like I was surprised there weren't more lineups that had both of them um, might have been sort of what I should have done but yeah like I got to Harden on a mistake on faulty logic of thinking his ownership was going to be higher and in all actuality, like, I rolled the dice. If I would have started a different center than Embiid, like, I, it turns into, like, a, a oddly okay GPP lineup. But I'm happy that Harden played well. Again, I thought it was a good matchup. He's largely blowout-proof. The dude just plays. He played 35 minutes last night. They were up by, like, 30 early. He still played. Like, I know Brooklyn quote-unquote clawed back lost by 14 but like that was that wasn't a game after like the first six minutes so I might have ended up with Harden I might have beat a double up cut line but I did it because I was wrong to start my assumption so that's something I need to think about take a take a deeper look at ownership now I will say this I think he was under owned um I think he should have been owned more because of the fact that he's matchup proof and Brooklyn's bad. Um, he just stays out on the court. So I don't understand why he was faded as much as he was. And this, you know, this might, this performance itself might change that. But ultimately, I got to where I was with a little bit of luck. Nobody's ever mad about that. Small forward, I had Caspi and Joe Harris. Um, Caspi was 71% owned. Harris was 46% owned. They were just sort of the the chalky value plays at small forward. The only, uh, like, by locking Harden, that sort of put me in a place where I had to take both of those guys. Uh, they both missed value pretty dramatically. Um, neither one over 4x. Uh, they were both sort of not very good. And I'm not really shocked. I don't, there's not much else to say. They were rostered for reasons that weren't necessarily because they were good fantasy players. The only other real thing that I need to talk about would be at power forward. I had Trevor Booker and Thad Young. Um, Booker was okay, but 62% owned chalk. Thad Young, 6.7% ownership. Um, he had 21 fantasy points in 29 minutes, 3.5x, which is a bad night. And I mentioned in the live feed that you know, I expected to come on to this recap video and talk about how I took Thad Young and his ownership was crap and that, that was a mistake. We'll take a look at Power Forward and see how much of a mistake that was. And then finally, I had Embiid, 50% owned. He put up 4.4x, 42 points in 32 minutes. Uh, just not really a very good game for him. Um, he was not the center that you wanted to be on. His name was Andre Drummond. Um, but we will get there. So just take a quick look through the positions and then uh, stop. I need to prep the, uh, the breakdown video for the Tuesday slate. Um, so the best of the top level of point guards was Dame, which makes me feel good because I didn't really like anything else that was up here. Um, the only other guy that did like pretty well would be Reggie Jackson, who put up 32 fantasy points in 28 minutes and I'm gonna be honest guys like I thought that Reggie Jackson looked not very good as an option yesterday 
I think I mentioned as much in the live feed when asked about him. So kudos to those that rostered Reggie Jackson in a GPP. Yeah, that probably helped out big time. Um, Frank Mason put up value. He put up uh, 23 points in 24 minutes. Uh, it's not somebody who really would have been on. Um, and really, point guard was kind of a wasteland. And it makes me happy because that's sort of where I landed in that you know, I locked in Sean Livingston because of his price point and the minutes that he was supposed to get. But I didn't like anything all the way up to Lonzo, who laid an egg. So I am glad that I ended up not on Lonzo because he was my other point guard besides Dame. Um, but nothing really hit in all of this area. There were no real right answers. Shooting guard uh, was the spot that had everything in it. Lots of big performances tonight. As you know, I was on Harden, um, which obviously worked out really well for me. Uh, Pat McCaw was the sleeper shooting guard play. Put up 43 fantasy points in 33 minutes. I would have had a, haul, like a real hard time getting to him, although had the news come out early enough, it probably ends up taking the place of... Harden and LeBron ends up at small forward. What are you going to do? Um, Oladipo went crazy shooting the lights out like Harden. He put up 53 in 33 minutes. That was a great play. Um, I was just a little nervous about him coming back off of injury. But that was a, a game where he was set up to be in a good spot. Lou Williams, on the other hand, is probably going to make me look a little dumb. 50 fantasy points in 37 minutes. Uh, I didn't like that, and I just didn't like it because of his price. Um, I didn't think that he could really, like, I think this is his upper limit. No surprises there. Um, price is going to go up now even further, and that's just, it. his price is for his opportunity, and it's a little bit above, his, to me, his talent level. It's a weird place where that's converging right now just because of injuries. Uh, he's, he's basically a guy that I can't imagine rostering. He has the ability to do this because of how he can score in bunches, but he's not a guy that is normally on my list. As you know, I had Clay. I didn't like CJ McCollum last night. Um, he did underperform 24 points in 39 minutes. Um, but Caldwell Pope had a great game. Marcus Smart had a great game. Rivers had a great game. Wade had a great game. Jordan Clarkson had a great game. Danny Green, Berea, Lavert turns out to be the the best play. I think him or is it Isaiah Whitehead? I think he played really well as well. Um, just a lot of good at shooting guard in a spot where like I didn't really see it. If that was the position that hit. Um, and it was hard for me because of how much I liked Harden and then you know Clay was sort of a no brainer for me just because of the game so I was never even really looking at any of those mid tier shooting guards something to remember for the future see if you can find one that works look for a step down now at small forward um, you know Braun played well 52.8 uh, I think that people that had LeBron James are probably upset waking up to that number. He did hit. He didn't hit 5x. Um, you know, he was short of that 60 mark. And he had 20 of those 52 in the first six minutes of the game, which is insane. Everything else behind him missed. Covington was awful. Couldn't buy a bucket. Barnes was meh. Brandon Ingram didn't play well. Jalen Brown was ugh. Um, I didn't update any of my numbers for the uh, Damari Carroll news. He, They scratched him at like 650 or something like that. Didn't really change much for me. Uh, Fournier was yucky. Uh, Ariza, Corneli. If you had Kyle Anderson, that's good. I'm interested to see how Kyle Anderson's um, playing time is impacted when Kawhi comes back. Because I think that Kyle Anderson's been playing pretty well. Something I'm going to look into. Just ignore, like, fantasy be damned. Um, I'm just sort of curious how he's been playing, what his plus-minus numbers look like. I don't really pay attention to the Spurs 
the regular season until uh, until the end. Sorry uh, to my boy Ryan if he's watching this. Diehard Spurs fan. Uh, the only other shooting guard you would have wanted would be Lance Stevenson. He put up 38 in 23 minutes. Somebody asked me about him in the chat. Um, I didn't see it. And, like, I mean, if he, if he knew he was getting 23 minutes before the game, well, I guess you probably still would have taken him because I had him projected for 21, but I, I didn't see it. So good for, good for the people that were on Lance. No value plays at the bottom hit. Caspi was garbage. Wasn't really anybody else of value. Tucker didn't do really anything. Although I watched him hit two threes in the five minutes of that game that I watched. Power forward. Um, I know Blake left and didn't return. I was still able to put together a decent night. Uh, not the best night for Ben Simmons coming back off of injury. Same for Zinger. That's why I don't like getting those guys in the first game back. It, it's not like it's rust or anything, but it's just easier for them to... I like them to get a game back. You know, sometimes you get the game like Oladipo where he just goes ham. Um, but at power forward, that was, that was a place where... Like, I was pretty locked into Booker because of the value and the minutes, which he ultimately didn't get. He only played 20 minutes out of what I was expecting to be 32. And I still don't really understand why, outside of the fact that the, they just got their asses handed to them early but for me I couldn't figure out where to go like I could get to Thad who I thought had a really good matchup and it was a good game you know it was going to be up and down and I didn't I just didn't like anybody else in and around there and and anytime I tried to move off of it like I was landing on guys that I didn't like like in that Sarich range and I guess it's good because from Tatum to Booker, they were all trash. But the big side of the power forward market hit, and Aldridge hit in a big way for 64 and a half in 37 minutes. I never even looked at him. And I guess I should have, uh, but he wasn't on my radar. Um, I didn't, because of having the other three Warriors. I never really paid attention to Draymond. Like, I liked Clay more than Dre. And then, uh, you know, Caspi and Livingston were in there for much different reasons. But if you had Aaron Gordon or Tobias Harris or Sabonis, great nights. Um, not a lot really to hurt you at the top level of power forward. And then at center, um, you know, Embiid was fine. 32 minutes, 42 fantasy points you know it's, it's not what you wanted out of him but at 50 percent ownership it was fine uh drummond though 70 fantasy points against the celtics in 39 minutes is oh his ownership in the double up when i looked at it was like 0.7 percent maybe i was looking at somebody else just really bad or for like somebody probably cashed solely because of him um and Vooch had a good game. Somebody asked me in the chat about that, about Vooch, and for some reason I just never really looked at him because I liked uh, DeAndre Jordan and Kevin Love better, and they both played like shit, and you could add together DeAndre Jordan and Kevin Love's score and still not get to Vooch. So what the hell do I know? Why does anybody listen to me? <laughs> um, dude, uh, that Clippers team is just in trouble, and... Uh, DeAndre's probably losing his mind. 17 fantasy points in 30 minutes. Like, that's just... He should get that on accident. Like, that's... Like, he... He should be able to dunk... He should be able to have one put back in every quarter and 12 rebounds. Three rebounds a quarter. And that's 20-something fantasy points. Just, like without even really working hard just fortunate placement 17.8 fantasy points is embarrassing um capella ended up 27 minutes played which is exactly what i projected him for 35.7 fantasy points which is basically exactly what i projected him for you know off by less than one point so spot on for capella 
Um, if you had Pau Gasol or Willie Colley Stein, you're probably happy. Uh, Kyle O'Quinn, you know, 24 points, 24 minutes, 4.8 salary. It's fine. Nothing really interesting at center unless you were an Andre Drummond haver. You know, Gasol and Willie Colley Stein went off. I mean, they put up, you know, 40 plus fantasy points. But, you know, they're, they're GPP guys that you can't. Their ownership was low. You're not on them at all. And one that I didn't look at, and I don't see his name anywhere, and I don't know why it's not showing up, but I assume he's not showing up because he didn't play as much. Where is it? Tarek Black put up 10.5 fantasy points in 15 minutes. This is one of those cases where I think people were uh, trying to be too smart for their own good. He, he doesn't play. Like, if Capella were out, Black's a great play. But because Nene is out, it's not like you, we needed to make up the world's largest amount of minutes. I didn't understand the, the amount of people that asked about Black, whether it was on Reddit or in my comments on Twitter or, you know, in the chat. I didn't get it. And I, I he did exactly what I expected him to do. He played, you know... 15 minutes in le or less and you know, didn't really perform because he's Tarek Black. If he was going to put up you know, 20 fantasy points in 15 minutes, he'd probably play more. But he doesn't because he's Tarek Black. <laughs> didn't get that one. I'm happy that he didn't play well because it didn't make any sense to me. It wouldn't have made me question things. So that's the breakdown for uh, for last night. You know, not a not a positive night for me, but I wouldn't take it as a negative night. Um, we got to dig into Thad a little bit, figure out where I went wrong there. I knew that he was going to be a lower ownership guy because he's just not the type of guy like he, you know, his, he didn't have a value salary. Uh, but I thought that he was in a position to play well. And he just come, he only took like nine shots, he's one for nine or something from the field. It's just not very good. Um, yeah, you know, it's a night I'll take. If I can beat the cut line in a double up, I'm going to, you know, but, but like not hit that. Like if I'm in between that double up cut line and triple up cut line, the triple up cut line is like 278 or something. I was right there, you know. I just need that to have a pulse. Um, like if I'm right there, that's fine. Because if I hit that triple up cut line, then I'm, you know, I'm probably up 20%. It's a, it's a really minimal swing, um, but being able to hit that double up cut line threshold is where I want to be. Uh, as I have bigger nights, they sort of increase in winnings exponentially, so it's a tread water night for me. I'll take it. We're on to Tuesday. That's it for me. Um, I'm going to update my sheet right now and get ready to do the breakdown video of the Tuesday slate, and then I will be back tonight for a live before lock video where hopefully it goes a little bit better and uh, I win some money. Hopefully everybody wins some money. But hopefully everybody wins some money because you have like similar stuff to me and we don't go against each other. That's all I got. Uh, like if you like it, subscribe if you want to. I will show you guys one quick thing. I hit my 10,000 views number, thanks to you all, um, so I get to be reviewed and I can start bringing in like 40 cents a video from crappy ad rates, so that's all because of you guys liking, subscribing, um, doing all the stuff that you guys do, uh, showed great support over the past month and I, it, it's really, it really makes this fun. Um, so if you can, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check me out on the DFS Reddit board. Um, pretty anywhere. Just find me. I'll talk about fantasy basketball for sure. That's it. Have a good day.